the New World Order, and the conspiracy to cover it up. The shadow government's agenda in keeping us asleep. The injustice, catastrophe, and the global chaos are all indications that we are living in a period of time known as the end of days. Are you looking for answers? They are out there. And together, we will find them as we navigate through end times now with Bree. How's it going, guys? Welcome to End Times Now with Bree. I'm Bree. Oh, I'm so happy to be doing this right now. You have no idea. Okay, so next time you hear someone say that they think it would be cool to live in Bible times, just tell them to look around. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some things today. Um, I wanted to say thanks so much for sticking this out with me. I think it's been like two weeks. Every single time uh, this happens where my audio goes out, I seem to learn a little bit more, but <laughs> this is the longest that it's gone. And I'm really sorry about that. Every single time, every time. In fact, I talked to Chad one day and I said, hey, does this happen to you? And he's like, yep. <laughs> and I'm like, bro. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, so... Regardless, I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I am elated that it's finally fixed again. In fact, I shut off all of my updates, period. I was like, nope, no update here, no update here. Of course, it's sending me error messages. Are you sure you want to do that? It's not recommended. I'm like, well, neither is cheese whiz, but that's yummy. Okay, anyway, um... So check this out. 29 countries are listening to these messages. Um, some of them are places that you'd lose your head for listening. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's, that said, I just, I want anyone out there who might be in one of those places to know that I'm praying for you guys. God bless you and keep you and also keep your VPN. Um, and also, that being said, about different countries and whatnot, I wanted to relay something that I got from a listener a while back. Actually, about two weeks back. Uh, her name is Debbie, and she's in Ireland. Um, I asked her if what I was seeing on social media was accurate, and uh, this was her reply. She says... Uh, yes, it's so, so bad here. Southern Ireland is also having the same problem. There's actually now what they call Tent City, now in Dublin, where it's streets filled with tents of illegal immigrants. Uh, there was street riots a few months ago, and one went on a rampage, stabbing a six-year-old and the teacher. Sadly, the teacher passed away. Here in Belfast, we have a lady from Dublin known as Anna Christian. She's become quite famous here in the North. Uh, she, she used to dress all in white as a nun and preach all around Belfast. Then she became quite crazy. <laughs> Says, I don't mean that bad as she's such a lovely woman. I just don't know how to describe what she's been doing. Lately, she's been really quiet and people have been asking where she is. Turns out she's been arrested and she's being held in a women's prison. It came to light about a week ago, so that would have been three weeks ago, that she's actually in solitary confinement 23 hours a day, apparently because she was preaching that a marriage is between a man and a woman, which it is, she says, and it is, so the Bible says. Um, as this is her view, that's why they have her locked up for 23 hours a day with no lawyer. Some people have got together and got her a legal representative. The word is they brought her in front of the head of the prison and asked, uh, had she changed her mind? She said, no, a marriage is between a man and a woman. So they put her back. They put her back in solitary confinement. Absolutely against all of her human rights. So today I was told she's appearing by video link in court tomorrow. Absolutely awful what's going on over here. A man was raped about a year ago by three illegals and nothing more has been heard about that. 
Another one was caught by a group of people that catch pedophiles. He was arranging to meet a child aged 13, wanted to marry her and then bring her back to Tunisia. While the people who caught them were holding him waiting for the police, he broke free and got away. Where I live used to be quite upper class. Now it's so bad and run down. None of my neighbors speak English. And as I live alone, I won't even leave my house if it's dark. Um, <clears throat> she goes on to say that they're taking up sh- a lot of shops and making them halal food stores and takeaways or even shisha lounges where they all flock to in crowds. It's madness. So, um, I went in search of dear Anna Christian and I found her in one video she was crying out to the Lord and this, and she was like crying. Okay. And this young turdlet comes over and flashes his camera in her face. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to put, I'm going to put her Twitter handle into the description. I would just simply ask that y'all go send some prayers out for her and then drop her a line. Um, I'll let her know that she is in fact being prayed for. Um, it's certainly that time y'all, you know, I guess I should probably try and find out uh, a an update on her. Um, <clears throat> and I can go ahead and put that like on Facebook or whatever. But just so you guys know, I pray for every single person that finds themselves listening to what I have to say. Um, because I know that there's going to come a time when we're going to, we're going to need that prayer. And I say, thank you. And I say, God bless you. Keep passing along, guys, because we live in a time that um, we could actually have the access to this type of information stripped away from us. So we need to be hungry for the truth now while we can get it, right? Um, Let's see, the eclipse. The eclipse is coming in, what is it, six days. Right now it's uh, April the 2nd. And... um, I actually heard a pastor say that he didn't think that there was anything special regarding these upcoming eclipses. Um, He said, there's a lot of cities named Salem in the U S and I'm like, yeah, actually 36 to be exact. But how many cities are named Nineveh? (laughs) How many are Nineveh in the U S seven Jack? There are seven. And I think that that's pretty significant. Not that that guy's name is Jack, by the way. Um, that said, you know, we're looking at a significant event. Uh, it, it occurred yesterday and it's Damascus. The Bible says in Isaiah that it will be a ruinous heap. It'll be uninhabitable. And, and yesterday Israel struck an an Iranian embassy, which was a military target, just to let you know, not a diplomatic one. Um, but there are a lot of key guys who died in that attack. So while it's not unhabitable now, I think it's safe to say that it's on like Donkey Kong. Um, Also, I just posted on my telegram that uh, the telegram accounts linked to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, are claiming that significant activity is ongoing at long range missile sites, across Iran, and that, quote, the zero hour for an attack on Israel is near. That means things are going to get heavy. <laughs> and I just want you guys to know that um, when it comes to stuff like this, I'm going to be posting, posting it on Telegram. I will not put it on Facebook because of the fact that it's so censored. And I, you know, yeah, you guys get the, you get the gist, you get the point. So everything will be in my, in the description. All my links will be in the description. So you know how to find me. Um, Plus, of course, you know, the Twitter. I'm on the Twitter. And don't hesitate to go there and say hi on Facebook because I always like that. So, Um, and also, you know, I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to get on the whole fear monger train because that's not, that's not it at all. My goal is to spread the very real truth that speaks to the fact that we are, in fact, um, some significant things are happening in conjunction with 
the signs in the sky and, and what's happening, not just in Israel, but all over the world. It's significant. Uh, and let's not forget that Jesus told us when we saw these things in conjunction with the signs to look up for his coming is soon, right? Um, there's something called the Matzeroth. Jesus knew of the Matzeroth. It's mentioned one time in the Bible. And in fact, they all knew of the Matzeroth. It was there to mark the Moyadim or the seasons and the appointed times, right? And so I have to think what, what guys like Adam and Enoch and Methuselah and Noah and all these guys, right? What did they use to teach their kids about the plan of redemption? Psalm 19 confirms that the heavens will declare it, right? So it wasn't until Babel or the tower to God, that's what that means, Babel, that the Matzeroth became corrupt. It was then used as the, the, the zodiac. Um, and then God, of course, in all of his cleverness, used the pun Babel, which ultimately became, of course, Babylon. And we all know what happened with that. <laughs> so I'm not saying that, you know, we should remain focused on the actual event per se of this eclipse, but we should be tuned in to the things that surround these, these signs in the sky, right? And, and help others to understand that as well. But if we're just ignoring them and not seeking, again, like he tells us to, then how are we going to be able to show others how to seek for those truths as well, right? These are, these are like bell ringers. God's saying, hello, this is happening. Pay attention, right? Um, and there are some people who are, you know, digging back in their Bibles again, which is awesome, you know, and, and they're looking for answers. Um, what about the people who are on the fence, you know? Ultimately, it comes down to Luke 21, 25 and Matthew 24. And Jesus said them both. So why, you know, while I'm still going to pay my car payment uh, and what would have been my mortgage, but that's done now. By the way, house is sold and done. Yay. Um, that's a miracle from heaven right there. But, you know, while we're still going to pay our, our car payment, I'm still going to give the people... Um, <clears throat> that are put in my path, the things that connect the dots from one biblical, you know, from a biblical standpoint. So, um, because that's what we're told to do. That's our job in today's day and age. And so that being said, uh, knowing what I know, well, I, I wouldn't be mad if we were shuffled out, out of here sooner <laughs> than later. Just saying. Uh, but I'm not complaining. And I'm not saying that Jesus is coming back on April 8th either. Okay, you guys, <laughs> just to let you know, because in reality, he can come back right now. But what I am saying is that when we start to see all of these things, this is what he says. When you start to see all of these things begin to converge, like in the Middle East and all over the world, it's important to take his word seriously. And he told us to look to the heavens for those signs of his coming so that we would know the time of his coming, not the day or the hour, the time, um, the moyadim, the season. All right. So in the last couple of episodes, we went over those signs in the heavens. And this time we're going to talk about the Antichrist. Um, we're going to talk about the revelation and we're going to talk about Antichrist. And we've got the beast and the prophet. And we're going to talk about the rapture and the millennial kingdom. This is all going to be one big series of things here. Um, but first, what's going on out there, y'all? Let's see. Okay, so uh, red flag law is a thing now, which means if you have a kid like mine who loved living in the country because we liked to target practice on milk jugs and old melons, add to that the fact that he's homeschooled. And he knows <laughs> Bible prophecy better than a lot of pastors out there. Well, you know, we're the perfect target for a knock on that door. Um, if you don't know what the red flag law is, go look it up. Yeah, I don't love it. I don't love it. I'll admit that I didn't read the whole bill, but I'm willing to believe that based on the track record here that there's going to be some loopholes there. 
or the good old presidential governmental overreach. <laughs> yeah. It's caca poo poo, but it's not news, right? It's something that I really feel like we knew was headed this way. It, we knew it was coming. And, you know, yeah. So next, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of the uproar that Biden caused because he named March 31st, which happened to be Easter, Transgender Recognition Day. <laughs> I'm like, what, dude? Oy vey. Uh Okay, so what I'm going to say about this simply is that even though Easter is a pagan holiday, and we'll talk about that in another episode, um, it's still like a slap in the face, okay? Because of that, because of the fact that it's Astarte, Ishtar, Ashtaroth. Um, nevertheless, okay, we, we shouldn't be surprised again, right? And so I keep saying it, Satan's realm is getting ballsy, right? So I really feel like it's time that we do too. Um, yeah, I just, I, you know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with a little bit of righteous anger is all I'm saying. Um, and so, yeah, moving on. I'm sure that, um, you guys, everybody heard of the Baltimore bridge, right? Six guys all with the family lost their lives. And all I'm going to say is that when you have key people like the FBI and so on ruling it, um, immediately that there was nothing suspicious going on, chances are there's something suspicious going on. Um, so yeah, these guys, these guys told Homeland Security before, they left the pier that they kept losing power. They also had an open complaint regarding some pretty significant repairs, but it seemed as though, you know, I don't know, maybe Boeing was handling that safety checklist. Who knows? Um, <laughs> there's definitely some weird things that, that I noticed regarding the physics of the whole matter, but whatever, at this point, I'm just going to say that God will bring forth the truth. We know that. And that... Um, at the very least, we should be praying for the families of, every, of everyone who lost someone as well as those who survived. Because could you imagine the survivor's, survivor's guilt on that? Um, that would be, that would be hor- horrible. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then I stumbled on some videos of, of Karens getting owned. <laughs> oh, this was good. Um, this one dude, he just, he kills it. And so, all right. So he goes up to some randos. And he asked some questions like, do you think, <laughs> do you think genitals define gender? And they're all, no. And he says, well, then if genitals don't define gender, then why does removing them affirm it? <laughs> and her answer is, well, because to the person who removes them, it's more affirming societally. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> because in the dictionary, if you look up the word redundant, you'll see the word redundant. Um, but then there's this other one. He goes up to another woman and asks her the same question to which she, she says, uh, pretty much the same thing. And that gender is a societal construct. Okay. Well, first let's look at that definition, shall we? Cause I, I hear that all the time and I'm just like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's kind of deconstruct that construct. <laughs> uh, Okay, so this is right up my alley because I'm working with my kid on this kind of stuff. So I'm like, you know, bring on the fifth grade education. Let's go. So the word construct in this instance is an abstract noun. That means that it's a thing, like a noun is a person, place, or a thing. But because it's a thought or a feeling or a thought process, et cetera, like you can't really touch it, like happiness or love would be an abstract noun. This is also an abstract noun. And here's what Webster had to say. Construct, something constructed by the mind, such as a theoretical entity, um, a working hypothesis or concept, or a product of ideology, history, or social circumstances. And then underneath that, it says, (laughs) it gives an example, it says, Privacy is more than a social construct or an idea. It is a condition of the body. Really? You don't say. (laughs) So let me just make sure I'm clear here. Privacy is not a social construct because it is 
a condition of the body, but the privates themselves aren't. <laughs> so privacy in, privates out, abstract noun in, actual solid noun out. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but seriously, though, it's at this moment when, when I think to myself, you know what? I'd really like to mosey on back to my 15-year-old version, okay, of myself and let me know that, you know, that, uh, that whole thing about the construct. Um, and then I, I, I think, of, when I'm thinking about it, I see, I see the 15-year-old self with chocolate on the face and a potato chip in the hair and like, you know, I'm on my third day of solid cramp standing in front of the older, much wiser self listening to that colossal lie (laughs) and then all of a sudden the older much wiser version of myself simply just disappears that's right just a just a blip just a blip on the screen and you're probably saying but why why do you say that why are you just a blip why does your older version disappear okay well it's easy and it's really simply because the teen brie okay Eight, the older, much wiser Brie, pushing a half a century Brie, you know, all gone. Uh, because back then, that's what I did. I, I, I bit the head clean off of a dum-dum. And that's just, yeah, no qualms about that. Even letting the dum-dum finish the story, that wasn't going to happen. Uh, I had no idea what Grace was. In fact, as far as I was concerned... Grace died 30 years ago. And if you've never seen Christmas Vacation, you won't get that, but that's okay. Um, And here's something else fun. This is fun. If you're listening to this podcast right now and you have made it to middle school, hopefully, uh, if you're not in middle school yet, you probably shouldn't be listening to these. Go ask your mom or your dad to listen to them and, yeah, have them explain it all. Um. But anyways, if that's the case, you're, you're officially smarter, smarter than Neil deGrasse Tyson. Because, um, and if you don't know who he is, look him up. This man is one of the most intelligent people on the planet. And I can say that now I'm smarter than him. And so can you, by the way. <laughs> because... I ran across an interview that he did a while back saying that chromosomes are insufficient. Yes, you heard that correctly. Chromosomes are insufficient. And then he backed it up with the idea that however we feel when we wake up in the morning, is that, that's what dictate that that is. I can't even talk. That's how crazy. That's what dictates what gender we are. Like, What? I just, oh man. Okay. Um, and then also, of course, P. Diddy is apparently a pedo Diddy. Um, Caitlyn Jenner is still a man and so is Dylan Mulvaney. But, you know, hey, lots of peeps to pray for y'all. And remember, remember this, you know, I poke fun, but it, we really do need to love the sinner and hate the sin, you guys. That's That's pretty black and white, okay? <clears throat> so... Yeah, I'll just leave you with that. Okay, so the question um, for the day is, what's up with the Antichrist? Is he, like, just hanging out, playing Fortnite, waiting until that moment comes where he's all, well, yep, about that time. Need to, need to, need to bust here. Um, you know, if we're here, if we're here, when he comes on scene, we need to know who he is. And what to look for, right? Okay, well, first of all, while I believe that we should know the characteristics of the dude, uh, I think it should only be so that we can teach others, okay? Um, I mean, yes, like I said, we, we, we do kind of need to know, like, what to look for, but I really do believe that that shouldn't be our focus. I'll put it that way. Um. So basically, I really want to enforce how important it is to look for Jesus and not the Antichrist. Um, And everybody seems to have like their own opinions on whether or not the true followers of Christ will even see him. Once the restrainer is pulled out of the way, uh, you know, then then the man of lawlessness will be revealed. But nobody can really 
no one can really um, settle themselves on who the restrainer actually is. And we'll get into that at some point too. But um, I just, you know, I'll tell you what I know that the Bible says, and then you guys can come to your own conclusions. Okay. Okay. So let's start with what we know. Um, <clears throat> there are many references to the man. And we're given a pretty solid picture to go by, actually. Uh, the one thing that we need to remember is the fact that just like God has a trinity, so does the enemy. And we're going to get to that. Um, there is the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the beast, which is also a type of economic system. And he's able to wield power that dictates what, what society is and isn't allowed to participate in, economically speaking. And so while we, while we don't see anybody on scene yet who fits that bill of, of the personification of Antichrist, I have a pretty solid clue of the false prophet and, uh, and what will be wielded as the proverbial sword of the beast system. And it's all right there in that trusty little book we call the Bible. Um, and, and I'm going to lay that out for you. But my logic says that if Satan mimics God and Jesus is God, then who's to say that Satan's prophet also uh, has the spirit of Satan, right? Like, <clears throat> why, why wouldn't Satan be able to jump between the prophet and the Antichrist? You know what I'm saying? Um, so also John assures us that the Antichrist is already in the world. So we know the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. Well, what does that mean exactly? It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, and, and I think that it flip flops between, between the two, but stick with me. Okay. And I'm going to tie it all in for you. Um, the Antichrist will be one man. He heads up one religion and the one currency are we noticing something here? One. Uh, the religion and the currency will be globally universal. And at the top of all of it will be a man who was born for the specific purpose of being indwelt by Satan. This man is the basis of many clubs and secret societies whose only agenda, whether they know it or not, is to further the New World Order and bring him into power. Um, and I'll get into that later as well. But what baffles me is the fact that these people believe that they are bringing in something that is simply an angel of light, right? That he's a good guy. Come on, he's a good guy. It's called deceit, deception. There's a delusion there. Um, yeah, so, okay. So one common denominator which isn't surprising here about these societies is that they're either run by the elite or at least have a Rolodex <laughs> full of elites in, in their pockets, uh, but also have lots of followers. And many of these people believe that they like, they know the truth, but sadly they've been deceived. Right. Um, <clears throat> I mean, even the Illuminati has a, has a website. They all do. They all have a website. It's insane. But okay. So who is this guy? Um, all right. Well, he will be a man. He will not have an affinity for women. However, this, and I want to be clear with this. Okay. I have heard a lot of people say, I've even said it at some points too, that maybe that means he's gay. Uh, I, I don't necessarily believe that that's that that's the kitten caboodle, okay? Um, because just because he doesn't have an affinity for women doesn't mean that he won't have a wife, okay? If Satan is a liar, and he is, then who's to say that he wouldn't have a wife to put on a big show? There's nothing in the scripture that speaks on that. Um, rather, it's... It's discussing gods and, and, the, and the worship thereof, okay, when it's talking about this. But better yet, what if, what if there is no wife at all? Um, my opinion is that Satan hates us, okay? So, so then why would he partner with any one of us? 
especially in that sense, right? That makes sense. Um, the Bible says that everyone will love this guy. Okay. So I could see an interview with some journalists where she's all like, you're so handsome, blah, blah, blah. And you're so smart, intelligent, and yucka, yucka, yucka. How come you're not married? And he's all, well, because my focus right now is on you. <laughs> Pretty lady. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Um, in other words, he's going to act like his focus is on what's in the best interest of the people, right? Uh, the Bible says in Revelation and in other places that Satan will deceive the whole world. And you know what sucks about this, you guys, is that for anybody that's not totally aligned with the word, um, they're going to be deceived. So that's everyone. That's everyone that's not aligned with the word. That's a lot of people when you think about it. Um, so the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And as a result, they will perish. Hold on to that verse because it's going to come up later. Just like Judas was indwelled by Satan, so shall the Antichrist be as well. He will be a man that will be indwelled by Satan and he will be the superpower behind the one world religion, the one world government and the beast system. Um, the rights to the beast system will come with a mark. Side note, God has a mark too, but Satan will cause all both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond to take the mark in their right hand or in their foreheads um, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six. And that's Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 through 18. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. We're going to do it again. But there's a lot of names that this dude is known by. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and if we remember, it said it's the number of his name. And so there's a lot of uh, speculation on where he's going to come by or where he's going to come from. So he's got a lot of names and there's a lot of speculation of where he's going to come from. We, some people say Europe. Some people say the Middle East. Some even say the U.S. My opinion on the matter is that wherever he's from, he must be accepted by the Jews. Uh, sadly, the, the tribulation is not just for unbelievers in particular. It's for the Jews. And the Holocaust, where one third, uh, one in three was taken out, this is going to be two and three. So two thirds of them are going to lose their lives during the tribulation. Um, and so that is based on the amount of people that are left on earth. Okay. And we're not going to really get into all that because of the fact that it's a very deep study. In fact, this whole thing is, it should take like, it should be like 12 hours, <clears throat> but we're not going to do that. So we're going to take it little by little. Um, okay, so now what are some of those names that this turkey goes by? Uh, let's see, we have the devil, right? And it's the most suggestive, I think, of his character. It means, it means, uh, adversary. And so if you take the D away and you look at what's left, it's evil. If you take the E away, then vile is left. If you take the V, then ill is left. And it's equally true of the Antichrist. Um, his names reveal his character. They expose his vileness and they forecast his career and his doom. Right? 
Um, there, I have heard now several times because of uh, DJ Trump, um, he has opened up his mouth and said some things. It is not Donald Trump, okay, you guys? Um, if, if there's anybody out there wondering if Trump is the Antichrist, and I've seen it, I have seen people come out and say it, it's not either candidate running for POTUS right now, okay? And you're going to see why in a minute, but I'm going to lay it out so that you guys, you're, and actually, this is, this is something that I want to stress uh, since we're sitting here on this subject for a moment. I'm, I want to stress this, okay? Because of the fact that I have seen a lot of believers um, go public, publicly and say that Trump is the Antichrist or that Biden is the Antichrist or, you know, whatever, okay? While there have been many Antichrists throughout the ages, uh, saying these things is dangerous, you guys, okay? Um, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the word Antichrist means pseudo-Christ. In other words, it's more than, than just someone who embraces the enemy, okay? It's, you know, it's more than that. And while Trump may have made some of these offhanded remarks, this is a person who puts themselves in the place of the, the true Messiah, okay? He sits in the temple on the throne. So let's remember that. The temple gets built. In fact, it's the Antichrist that allows them to build it. And probably funds it too because he wants to sit on the throne. Okay, so if that happens, well, now we're talking about something entirely different. If, if, if Trump makes it that far and he, you know, ends up in Jerusalem and he's sitting on the throne in the temple, then, well, I think we have our answer. But that has not happened. Um, and, and the other thing is that not everybody loves him. Okay, like not everyone loves him. We have to remember that. This is a guy who everyone will be deceived by. Um, <clears throat> secondly, we are told specifically to refrain from slandering the leaders of all nations. And when we break it down, there are some very good reasons why. Okay. And I know I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, because I can't stress this enough. We need to take the word of God seriously at this point. In Romans 13, 1, God establishes all of the leaders of the nations, not some, all, okay? So we don't have to like it. Not once, not once does God say, yo, you need to like the fact that, you know, Gaza's getting crushed. No, he doesn't say that. Um, but we have to, we, we, and you know, we don't have to um, necessarily respect that, that human. Okay. Uh, we need to, however, not disrespect in the sense that we need to absolutely respect God and his choice in the matter. I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, it's his decision. And because his ways are higher than our ways, you know, his logic is not our logic. Ultimately, we need to just remember that we're just trying to get to the end of the book, yo. Okay? We're just trying to get home. And in order to do that, there's some bad things that have to happen to some people. Um, and in the meantime, he tells us to act a certain way. And so we need to do that. But the third reason is because we Christians often times forget that everyone will love the Antichrist, right? We need to consider how this guy will appeal to, the, to all of the nations, the Jews are going to love him, and so will the Hindus, and so will the Muslims, right? In fact, I'm going to tread on some pretty sticky subjects here throughout this series. Um, you know, especially to some of my people out there in the Middle East. But I'm telling you, you can check your Quran and your Hadith and your Tafsir. You can check all that stuff. You'll see what I'm saying is true when we really get into this, okay? Um, 
bottom line, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I am just trying to give the truth from a biblical standpoint standpoint, and then out and expose the falsehoods from other, from other uh, avenues. Okay. And so I'm not saying, you know, that you're going to get everything here in, in one false swoop, but by the time this series is complete, y'all should be able to, you know, prove the Bible is true and should be able to sit down with, with pretty much anyone from any religion and have a solid conversation that, you know, you can hopefully maybe throw some weight around and get a person who might be deceived to see, uh, to see your point and to see the truth. It's, it's really all about understanding that all of the small G's are the same. So you can get to know them by simply Googling their equivalents. And then chances are you'll be able to find the correlation to them in the Bible. And a lot of times I find that uh, God will give me a lot of extra biblical resources and archaeological facts first. Okay. And then I can usually find it referenced in the Bible. Um, what I'm finding more and more is that those ancient small G's are, are definitely alive and well. Um, and they're living in places like New York and Chicago and California and DC and every university. And of course, in every public school (laughs) in America, maybe even across the street. I don't know. Um, which by the way, do a, do a search on who owns quote unquote owns all the, all the universities, like follow that rabbit hole for a few minutes and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but there's a narrative. Oh, and, and another thing too is, uh, Jonathan Kahn wrote a book called Return of the Gods. Go read it. That's a, that's a good one. And also Derek Gilbert, uh, Last Clash of the Titans. Um, but there's a narrative that these people that are in, you know, in, in these universities and in these cities and, and in the government and so on and so forth, there's a narrative that must be protected at all costs. And the New World Order is doing just that. Um, I'm working on another episode regarding that. It's something that you wouldn't believe if there, were, if there weren't proof, but I have proof of it. So anyways, I digress. Uh, there's a fourth and last reason that we need to be really careful when pointing a finger at a political figure. Um, and I'm well aware that Antichrist will be just that. I, I know he's going to be a political figure, but the figure he will be, will be, um, he's going to seem to be a person that will unify and not divide. Okay. For example, you know, and, and this is why this is important. If I'm over here flying a Trump flag, but I got a Biden supporter in my path, well, I can pretty much guarantee that that person isn't going to give me the time of day, you know, where I would be able to share the gospel with them or her. Okay, so then what? What happens? A uh, dude decides that he's had enough of the flags for a day and he wants to go get a pizza that's not nearly as good as the one that my guy Jesus would bring. And then he turns around and gets hit by a truck. Done so. And he's still hungry to top it off. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be all extra, (laughs) but in reality, that's a possibility. That's a possible thing. And it goes both ways. You know, uh, there are some, some listeners that are very left leaning and they might be throwing around a Biden flag. What about that Trump supporter that just because they're a Republican doesn't mean they're a Christian. Okay. It doesn't mean that they really know the truth. It doesn't mean that they really know the way. If you guys know my story, you knew I grew up, I grew up, uh, my mom was like, she always said, I, I'm, I'm this side of meaning left of General Mao or whatever his name was. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, no, not anymore. But anyways, um, this isn't about being political. This is about being a citizen of heaven first. Okay. Um, it's just not worth it. You guys, it's just not worth it. So if you are holding strong to all that stuff, let it go. You guys let that go. Obviously we have a, we have a duty. We, we need to vote 
uh, according to the Bible, but don't just let that go. Um, cause you could, you could, uh, inadvertently put a stumbling block before someone that was meant for you. Right. Um, and then there's this, right. And I, I just, I want y'all to remember this when you see people who say that they follow Christ, because, you know, we're told to gently use the book to help correct and edify one another. Okay. We're told that iron sharpens iron, right? We need to point these things out to whoever it is, whether it's our family members, um, whether it's a pastor, you know, and we, and we do it with love, of course, right? Um, If there's ever anything that I say that is not correct biblically, or you have a question about it, or, or you think that I need correction on it, please do not hesitate to, you know, to, to contact me on that. Um, because the last thing I would ever want is to speak something that's not accurate. Um, so, you know, I've, I mean, and I've heard a lot of people too talking about how anxious and nervous they are about like the elections coming, right? I don't want to get into all that, but you know, it's already going to be a long thing. Uh, the Bible says not to be anxious because he's got it. He places the leaders. Vote. That's our duty. Vote. Don't stand by. Don't stand idly by. He places the leaders and he has a plan for every one of them. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, our country is a total dumpster fire <laughs> right now. But you know what? That's okay. We really do need to see how blessed we are in this dumpster fire because we know the truth. We know the truth. And he says that although we will have trials and persecution and hard times, we are not appointed for his wrath. Um, I kind of, I liken it to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the flaming furnace. I mean, we are literally sitting right there in it, in the dumpster, (laughs) in the fire, but not a hair on our heads will be burned, right? I mean, it stinks and all, like, I'm sure it probably smells pretty bad. But I'd rather put my nose in the dirty diaper of a baby that just ate solid food for the first time. But like, let me just tell you, it is well with my soul. Um, And if you heed these words because you have surrendered to Christ as your eternal uh, salvation, then guess what? It can be well with your soul too. Because we fixed and got home and eat, brah. Um, And I just realized I talked about food. I talk about food a lot when I think about Jesus <laughs> and heaven, Oh, like when we're raptured out of here, I, I wonder, you know, what if, what if I'm in mid chew, you know, like what if I have a raspberry Entenmann's Danish, you know, am I going to, am I going to be allowed to finish that bite or does the Danish just disappear? I, I just want to know. <laughs> okay. Um, and then my point is this, uh, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 28, thou shalt not revile the gods nor curse the ruler of thy people. Got it. And another thing, (laughs) as we will see very shortly here, if these turkeys in Washington can't call down fire from heaven, they're definitely not the antichrist. We're going to see that too. So now that we've established the Antichrist is not Biden or Trump, who is he? Well, he's known as the Assyrian, who, by the way, in my opinion, this gives a decent idea as to where his roots are, at least. Um, if If he's Assyrian, that region today would be Saudi Arabia and Syria. Um, <clears throat> he's a man of sin, son of perdition. Remember, the, remember perdition is a palia. Uh, which means destroying, utter destruction of vessels, uh, perishing, ruin, destruction of money, the destruction which consists of eternal misery in hell. I find it interesting that it says the destruction of money too, by the way. And I just realized something that, (laughs) Apollia, well, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that. Let's just say it has, mm, nope, I'm going to save it. Um, because for the sake of time, yeah, 
So basically, I'm going to just go ahead and rattle these these off. These are his names. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put a list along with the verses on where you can find him in the description, okay? He's called the beast, the idol, the worthless shepherd, uh, the king with a fierce countenance, the lawless one, the little horn, the man of sin, the prince that shall come, the prince of Tyre, the spoiler, the extortioner, the vile person, the willful king, profane and wicked prince of Israel. Whoa, what does that do? Well, gee, I kind of feel like that points to a Jewish ancestry, right? There's other verses too that do that. Um, so Daniel, Daniel 11, 30, 37, Ezekiel 28, 10, and Genesis 49, verses 16 through 18. Some of his actions and characteristics, uh, he will be accepted by men, boastful speech, come to do his own will, henceforth the willful king, comes up from the bottomless pit, remember that, and remember Apollo, or Apollo, Apollo, sorry, and uh, remember the um, woman of Babylon, okay? I wasn't going to get into that, but... Uh, He comes with signs and lying wonders. He creates a covenant with Israel. He defiles the temple. His public work is limited to three and a half years. He's mortally wounded. He's the object of worship. Um, He's revealed at an appointed time and Satan gives him authority and power. Now, in stark contrast with Christ, right? Uh, I wanted to go through that contrast real quick just to show you how much of a poser this guy is. Um, So Christ. Okay. So while Satan is accepted by men, Christ was rejected by men. Um, Satan will have boastful speech. Christ speaks with authority. Uh, Satan comes to do his own will. Christ came to do his father's will. Satan comes up from the bottomless pit while Christ comes down from heaven, Satan will come up uh, with signs and lying wonders, but Christ did as well, except his were done in truth. And there was no trickery there, which kind of makes sense that Satan would come on scene in these days because he's going to have all kinds of access to all that technology that we have. Um, And it's all going to be done in deception. But John said too, though, that uh, Christ had done so many things that if if they could be written down, then the pages would fill the whole earth. Um, but for for a good measure, the confirmation in, in that is for is uh, let's see, it's Acts two twenty two. Satan will make a covenant with Israel, but will break it, and Christ does as well. He makes a covenant, but he honors it. Satan defiles a temple, and Christ cleanses it. Satan has three and a half years in public work, and so does Christ, as his ministry is also three and a half years. Uh, Satan gets a mortal wound, and Christ is also mortally wounded. Satan is the object of his worship, and Christ is the object of ours. Um, Satan is revealed in his appointed time, and Christ will be revealed in his appointed appointed time as well. Satan gives authority and power to the Antichrist, whereas Christ is given all authority and power. So you see, uh, when looking at it this way, it's easy to understand how Satan will get away with this deception, you guys. If it, it, It's like an opposites game, okay? But if we don't have the Holy Spirit to guide us and give us discernment, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Jesus himself said that many will come as false Christs. He also told the Jews that they will, will, they will accept the Antichrist, okay? Um, and there have been many antichrists, by the way, and uh, we'll get into that as well. But it's important to understand the unseen realm, who's in it, what's feeding it, um, and you know what what feeds it, what what does it eat, right? That's a whole other episode in and of itself. But we need to understand those things. I'll get there one 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 step at a time. So. We know Satan is going to have a false prophet and a beast. Uh, The Bible says he is the beast. 
But people often get confused by this because we don't understand that just like God is a triune God, meaning he's the head of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? That Satan is also a triune uh, evil Trinity. However, it's a, it's a bit different because he's limited in his abilities. He's not omniscient, which is all-knowing. He's not omnipotent, which is all-powerful, and he's not um, omnipresent, which means he's, he's everywhere. He's, he can't do that. Everywhere, all the time. Um, only Yahweh checks those boxes. Only the creator God, Yahweh. So, basically, Satan has to use all of his little demons to do his dirty work for him. And the demons are like parasites. Um, and I'll leave that for another episode as well. They do deserve an own episode, their own episode because there's a lot to go into that. Um, but I'm just saying that we need to get our heads, we need to get our heads wrapped around that, that, um, you know, what, what, what the components are of, of each, each Trinity actually. <clears throat> um, Okay, and so the characteristics of the man, let's see. So I am going to get into that. But before I do, I kind of wanted to break down some of the beast because the characteristics of the man will tie them all together. And like, God forbid, right, if we're still here when he comes, um, which I'm thinking we're not sticking around. But if I, I mean, I could be wrong, you know, then you guys will be able to smell this guy from a mile away. And based on what the Bible says, we should have a pretty pretty good idea uh, when he makes his debut on the world stage. And it'll probably be the only time that that I'd ever watch the 6 o'clock news, <laughs> just to kind of see what the difference is compared to that versus the Twitter feed, the feed of the Twitter. Um, okay, so there are some things that he's going to do in particular that we should know about. Um and there can be some confusion in the book of Revelation because of the fact that there are three aspects to Revelation. John is told uh, to write the things which thou hast seen. So the, the, um, the past and then the things which are. So the things in the present and then the things which will be hereafter. Uh, and... There are three parts there, right? But in order to really understand that, you need to go and read Daniel because they really do go hand in hand. By the time we we get to chapter four in Revelation, John's already seen a vision of Christ. He's seen uh, the seven letters, the seven churches, and we already see the heptatic structure beginning there. Um, There's a lot of sevens in Revelation, okay? But basically from chapters four to 22, so the rest of it from, from chapter four on, it's all about what follows after the churches. Um, so in other words, today, <clears throat> in today's day and age, actually it would be like after 1948. Um, and in chapter 13, we start to get a glimpse of some, some beasts, okay? And uh, in the Greek, we know that it's a beast of prey because it's Therion and not Zoa which is different. Uh, We see that this beast is made up of three animals. And if we really want to go back to Daniel and do a study on it, because it's interesting how well it fits in hundreds, uh, hundreds of years later. And then there's this passage. It's uh, chapter 13, verse three. And John says, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all of the world wondered after the beast. So, in the Old Testament, we have Zechariah chapter 11, verse 11, 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, And it says, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean and dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Okay, so first of all, we're not talking about idol as in lazy. Okay. It's regarding an actual idol. All right. And so here we have another example of the new Testament and the old Testament concealed and the old Testament and the new Testament revealed. But what does that mean exactly? 
well, I believe he's going to come back from an assassination attempt, right? But also, there are some figurative implications as well. So just stick with me. Um, in fact, let me just back up just a smidge. Okay, so this assassination attempt, if we look at this from the perspective of the fact that he also mimics, like he mimics all things God, um, he is mimicking Christ. And so he's probably going to be down for three days and three nights, just like Christ was. Right. I mean, it, it, it makes sense. Um, and then he's going to be brought back to life with some damage done. Right. Uh, because the Bible says too, that John says, um, and I saw the lamb as it were slain. Well, that makes sense. Then that the Antichrist would have a darkened right eye and a withered arm. Because, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, we see that the beast has 10 diadems. It's different than Stephanos, too, you guys. It's different than crowns. It's diadems. Um, which this lends itself to the idea that they're kings of nations, but also he speaks blasphemies and he continues for 42 months, three and a half years. And if you haven't heard the three episodes on the 10 Kings, go check that out. I think the first one that we did part one, I think was on Chad and Sherry's channel on investigate earth. Um, and yeah, so but what's interesting is that this period of time is the most documented period of time throughout the entire Bible. And so I kind of feel like if that's the case, well, we should probably pay attention, right? Um, and then we begin to see that he's given power to wage war with the saints, but he will overcome them. What does that mean, you guys? He will overcome them. Well, okay, so here's the thing, and I'm just going to say it, right? It's going to be awful. It's going to be an awful time. You don't want to stick around for it and not have Christ. I'll put it that way. Uh, those who did not heed the words that they should have, you know, lived for Christ, well, they might very well die for him. And the Bible says that it will be the time of Jacob's trouble, Although there will be many Gentiles in the tribulation, the great tribulation, the majority of the book of Revelation is written for the Jews. It's the final attempt by God to get whoever is left to turn and acknowledge and accept Christ as their Messiah so that they uh, may have their names written in a book in the book of life. Um, chapter 13, verse 8 says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. What? What was that? All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life. Um, okay. So, so with anybody that doesn't accept Christ, period. It doesn't matter if they're a good person. It says, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Being a good person doesn't get you to heaven. There's going to be a lot of people sitting in pews that are probably not going to make it in that club, sadly. So then the question is, how do you get your name in that book, right? Well, you got to kick it with Jesus. You got to kick it with Jesus, yo. I don't think he likes video games, though, just to be honest. Um, <clears throat> and Okay. So in talking about Revelation, uh, it's an interesting book, right? Because not only is there a promise of a blessing, like right out the gates, uh, there's a blessing. If it, it says there's a blessing who, to whoever reads it, but there's also hints and like tidbits that come, that become more clear every time you read it. And, and you can't understand it unless you read and study Daniel, period. You can also study Ruth. You can get a sense of the typology there too. Um, because like 
there's Boaz as the kinsman redeemer, who the typology of that would be Christ. And then we have Naomi, which would be Israel in particular, coming back to her inheritance. And then you have Ruth, who is the Gentile bride. That would be anybody that's not a Jew that accepts Christ. Anybody that's not a Jew, basically, is what it is. Another thing to keep in mind when reading Revelation is that uh, when an elder is speaking to John, he's speaking of the things that are happening in heaven. And when a beast is speaking, an angel, it's the things happening on earth. But I mentioned before that there is a heptatic structure here, that there's sevens everywhere. Um, And one place that I noticed was the seventh chapter, interestingly enough. But in order to get a full grasp of that, we need to go back to the sixth chapter. And here is where we deal with all of the seals. So the first seal is the dude on the white horse with the bow or the the tuxone uh, wearing the Stephanos or the crown or the corona. The second seal is the red horseman. The black seal, or sorry, the third seal is the black horseman, which is, is famine. The second one is war, too, by the way. Sorry. The fourth is death in Hades um, on the pale horse. And, and with this guy, a quarter of the earth dies in various ways. The fifth seal is interesting because when it's opened, the souls of the martyrs in history are all like, you know, are we there yet? I got to pee. And God's like, no, just a little while longer. We're waiting for your buddies. Here, have a rope. And then the sixth seal comes And there's a great earthquake and the sun becomes black and the moon as blood. The stars fall from heaven. This, this verse right here. uh, It's chapter six, verse 14. It says, and heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That is immediately following in verses, oh, sorry, that was verse, yeah, verse 14, that was immediately following the sixth seal. And then immediately following that, in verse 15 through 17, it says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man. Okay, so we're talking about some big shots here, okay? It doesn't say anything about slaves. It doesn't say anything about poor. It doesn't say anything about small. They're all big dogs here. They go and they hide themselves. It says they hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Okay. So right at verse 14, I was looking at this and I thought, could this be where the rapture occurs? Because immediately following that verse is the the day of his wrath. And first, I can't speak. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we just read in verse 17 that the great day of his wrath has arrived. I have have some other stuff that can kind of back that up, but we're not here to talk about the rapture. We're here to talk about Antichrist. Um, Also, uh, something to note here is that in the first chapter, Jesus identifies who's who, right? And something I want to point out is that the seven lampstands are the seven churches. That's what he says. And we're going to come back to that point when we actually do go into discussing, discussing the rapture. Um, but what's more is when we go into verse 7, we see that there is a pause, okay, a Sabbath, per se, between the seals. Um, sorry, not verse 7. It's... Uh, Chapter 7, there are four angels who are just, they are chomping at the bit. They're told, um, they're holding the wind. They're holding the wind. And they're told uh, not to touch anything. Don't touch the seas. Don't touch the trees. They don't 
want anything to be hurt. And it says, uh, chapter seven, verse one through three, it says, after these things, I saw four angels, meaning that's going to be the compass line, you guys, the north, south, east, west. Okay. Um, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. There you go. There's your compass. Having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay. Now, I'm just sitting here wondering what's in that wind? Like, is that a giant fart? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, obviously. Um, whatever it is, I bet you it does stink. But anyways, uh, they're, they're sitting there and they're like tagged in, but are told to like throw the game a little, right? They're, they're holding the wind. And it's here that I wanted to point something out. In, in many places, with regards to the seals, okay, many places. So we've got John 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 33, which is interesting, and uh, 6, 27. We've got 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 22, and then we have Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13, and also chapter 4, verse 30. We find that the word sealed is a past tense anytime they're speaking about it, meaning that it only applies as a seal, if it's a done deal, if you've accepted Christ, okay, then you're sealed. Um, and I'll put those in the description for you so you can go check that out on your own. But here in the seventh chapter of Revelation, there seems to be some more work that needs to be done in between the sixth and seventh seal. <clears throat> so what is that? What's going on? Uh, well, the 144,000 is what's going on. And I won't say here, but I just want to add that we know that these 40, 144,000 are virgin male Jews that go about evangelizing. Okay. Um, but, and they're sealed. Okay. So that's what's happening. They're sealed. And of course, you know, so we know that the Holy Spirit is still at work here on earth, just not the way that it once was. And so, like I said, I'm not going to stick around here. We'll come to that another time, but I just wanted to clear that up um, and just let you guys know that. Um, and so immediately we have 12,000 from every tribe, from the 12 tribes, except one. Well, technically two, if you want to get technical. But one thing I wanted to say right now, um, again, won't get into that here, but there are no lost tribes, you guys. Okay. There are no lost tribes. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, just email me <laughs> and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, but the other thing too is Manasseh, he obviously comes from Joseph, but in short, sort of like moves up the ranks. And then Ephraim, he turns out to be idolatrous as well as, um, as, well as the tribe of Dan uh, under Jeroboam. But we're going to leave that here for now, too. But really, I wanted to talk about the tribe of Dan. Um, and you're going to see why. So hopefully, uh, the tribe of Dan is missing when, when this chapter talks about who is sealed, the tribes that are sealed. The whole tribe of Dan is missing. And I have a theory about this. So walk with me here for a moment. Uh, there are prophecies from Moses and Jacob, and these prophecies talk about how Dan is a serpent and would eventually leave their allocated territories. Um, and we do know that Dan's sign, his symbol, was a serpent. And then the head of the tribe didn't like it, so Dan. And so it was changed to an eagle holding a serpent, and then ultimately it was just known as an eagle. And I don't want you to like, hang on. I, you know, I want you to hang on to that for just a moment. Um, because 
Well, you'll see. And then we know that according to Deborah in Judges chapter 5 verse 17, they, she says they wouldn't leave their ships to help with the invasion and that they sent some peeps from their coasts, their coastlines. You'll find that in Judges 18 too. And so they were definitely a seafaring tribe. Um, and also there's evidence that points to the tribe of Dan being responsible for populating most of Europe, which I'm going to come back to. Um, <clears throat> some other key factors that lend to the idea that the Danites were naughty little nuggets uh, is that through Dan, idolatry moved in. And if you go and you read Judges 18, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It explains quite a bit, actually. In 1 Kings chapter 12, they are a leader in the apostasy under Jeroboam, and that's where we find a golden calf. And then apparently 100 years later, they had so much fun the first time uh, because they decided to do it again. And eventually they're cursed for it in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 16. But what's more is in Deuteronomy chapter 29 verses 18 through 21, the idolaters have their names blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. And if we notice in 1 Chronicles chapter 1, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 8, um, we will see that their uh, genealogy is completely omitted from Dan. And so at this point, I think it's safe to say that God was not happy. <laughs> God was not happy with Dan. But let's move on. All right. So I think we can kind of see the logic now behind why Dan wasn't included in that. He got booted from the cool kids club. But check this out. This is it right here. If we're parallel with ancient Israel, which I definitely believe we are, then when we look at the tribe of Dan and we look at the United States, we can see a little bit of twinning going on here. And so there's some things I wanted to point out. Uh, when Deuteronomy says that their names will be blotted out, this is what it says. And this is, again, this is Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 17 through 20. And ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Now let's remember that in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 15, he says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. And then if we go back to Revelation chapter 8, verse 11, it says, And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So let's remember a couple of things that I spoke about in my very first episode. Uh, and that is, I think, it was the first one. And that is that, that there's a connection here to an asteroid named Apophis. Um, <clears throat> and so headed back to 29.19 in Deuteronomy, it says, uh, and it comes to pass when, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst. So, okay, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Well, let's remember that due to pride and stubbornness, God is eventually going to give them over to the lie. He calls it a delusion. Strong's says that a delusion is uh, a wandering, a straying about, one led astray from the right way, roams hither and thither. Um, and then if you go to verse 20, it says, the Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy 
shall smoke against the man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. So what are some of the other things that can relate uh, with the United States? Okay, well, for one, we came from Europe. Denmark was named after the tribe of Dan. And they went eventually going through Scandinavia and, and Europe and so on and so forth. And we came from Europe. We took over this land from a people who were just chilling, right? They were maxing and relaxing, much, much like the, the Danites did when they scoped out Laish. Uh, the Bible says that the people there were quiet and secure, meaning they were just hanging out too. They were playing with the rocks, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe chucking around a Frisbee, a Frisbee rock. I don't know. But in storms, 600 of these guys with weapons of war, and they took everybody out and burned it all to the ground. And then there's the symbol, right? The symbol is synonymous with the USA, the eagle. Um, some, some say it's a phoenix with us. The great seal, it's a phoenix. But nevertheless, it's a raptor, yo. It's a raptor. And this is just my opinion, but I kind of also feel like it depends on whether or not we're speaking of the word in a physical form, like in the physical realm or a spiritual one. Um, and so, cause I mean, I, I think, you know, when you look at Ishtar and you look at uh, Isis, there's a, they have a Phoenix that they're donning, right? Or is it a Falcon? I don't know, whatever. They're all Raptors. But let's look at the fact that they brought idolatry into the land too. Is it safe to say that we've done much the same? When you read Judges 18, you see they brought idolatry into the land. And look what we've done here. Look what we've done. Um, and then also, if we look at Revelation chapter 17 and 18, we see the woman on the beast, which is Babylon, um, which is also the mother of harlots and idolatry. And she is eventually destroyed by fire and all of the ships and merchants flip their lids, right? Because of the quote fear of their torment. Well, I can't help but think that torment will be that torment's going to be the last hoorah. I feel like in the great tribu tribulation and the fact that Dan isn't sealed from the wrath to come tells me quite a bit about who we're dealing with. You know what I mean? Uh, when you see the, um, the fact that you have a seafaring people and then you go to revelation and they, they match. I just, I kind of feel like, well, maybe there's something to that. Um, the other aspect of that too, though, is that they do inherit the tribe of, of Dan does inherit um, portions of land in the millennial kingdom. So that literally just says that even though they weren't sealed, it just means that they're going to go through the tribulation. It doesn't mean that they're gone. It means that they're going to go through the tribulation. Um, they're not sealed. They're not a part of these evangelists, the 144,000. Uh, but they are, you know, some of them are going to make it and they're going to come into the millennial kingdom. Okay, so, and I kind of feel like too, that's probably... That's probably a good indication as to why when you get to the end of the millennial kingdom, Satan is released for a little while. Um, probably because, you know, good old Dan. <laughs> um, okay, but so then why do I say all this? Well, there's some speculation here that when the Antichrist rises to become a world leader, it's possible that he's an Assyrian with Danite blood, right? Right. Um, and then we know one thing is for sure here. So he's got to be accepted by the Jews, but he also needs to be accepted by the likes of the Muslims too. I kind of feel like everybody else would kind of be a cakewalk there, but how is that going to work exactly? There's a lot of people who have tried to speculate that Antichrist would be Muslim, but I can tell you for sure that would never work. Okay. Jesus says that him they obey and, and that him, sorry, 
him they did not accept, but the one that comes is false, and they will accept and obey that one who is the Antichrist. And so to add to that, the same goes for the Muslims. They say the same thing, which it's uncanny, by the way, on their Dajjal and their, uh, what the Hadiths talk about regarding the Dajjal. And I'm going to get in that. I'm going to get in that on the next episode, though. (laughs) Uh, The next one, we're going to go into that um, and the beast. And I found something really, really cool that I'm really excited to share with you. In fact, I brought it to my mom the other day when uh, I was in between frustration (laughs) of coming up from the basement, um, trying to fix my computer and get the audio working. I will never shut this computer off again, (laughs) ever. There's no updates, nothing. It's going to stay just like this in the basement. (laughs) Anyway, um, she was, she had her mind blown and God like took me down this path. I felt so blessed. I cried because it really, it really is amazing. And I'm, I'm excited to share that with you. I might have to do a video on it though, because I don't know if you, I don't know. I have to, I have to look at it um, and just make sure that it's, it comes across clearly and articulately. Um. So here it is, guys, right? We're clearly in the end of days and prophecies are being fulfilled pretty rapidly, I'd say, uh, especially with the news of Damascus and all these other things that are happening. Um, If you think about these days and you're full of fear or you thought, you know, the thought of death scares you, you should probably think about whether or not you're sealed. Are you sealed by God? God has a seal too. Um, We're not going to escape trials and tribulations. If anybody says that to you, they're lying or they're misguided. And then at that point, it's our job to show them that we are in fact going to have those things happen. But the scripture says that we're not to suffer his wrath. Okay. Okay. Uh, This is different. This is different than trials and tribulations. And so if you're not sure, uh, if you're not sure and you still have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. But if that's you and you're fearful and, and you are, if you think about death and you're scared to die, you don't need to be. You don't need to be. All you need to do is be hungry. (laughs) Because if you've heard me before, I'm going to tell you, he's knocking at that door. You got to open up the door to Christ. When you do, I'm telling you, he's going to be standing there with a big old smile on his face, holding some Green Lantern pizza. Green Lantern is really good, by the way. And he's ready to dig in. He's hungry. He probably brought some cheese sticks too. And so you might want to get a move on that because I'm sure it's getting cold. (laughs) Anyway. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Uh, Your verse of the day is Job. Chapter 19, verse 25, I picked this two weeks ago, and so I don't even know if it's relevant. (laughs) I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, it is. It is. Um, And it's a good study to get into, by the way. But again, thank you so much for hanging out with me and for being patient with me and for praying for me. You guys are amazing. I get these emails, and you guys are like, on time, on time. And I'm just so grateful and so thankful for each and every one of you guys. And so um, with that, until next time, this is Brianna signing off, saying God bless.